Liberal House Leader Karina Gould goes on the CBC to peddle more misinformation about the Green Slush Fund. I don't believe she was expecting for the CBC anchor to push back. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. For those of you that are not aware, the House of Commons in June of 2024 passed a unanimous consent by vote to have unredacted documents pertaining to the SDTC or what's known as the Green Slush Fund handed over to the RCMP so that they can investigate all of the embezzlement and all of the crimes that may or may not have been committed by the liberal insiders that were at the helm of this now shuttered group. Of course, the liberals decided that they didn't want that to happen. And over the summertime, they handed in a whole bunch of documents, but they were all redacted. And of course, being seasoned politicians, all of the people that have voted in favor of the um, motion had prepared for that, and they left in the motion that the documents be sent unredacted. Now the House has been locked because the Liberal Party refuses to send them in unredacted, and they want to go and pretend that they're going through the motions. Now before we go into it, I would encourage you all to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all your socials. I'm trying to make improvements, and any of the assistance that you're willing to give me, I appreciate. I have memberships for those of you that wish to support the channel further. All right, so let's go back to the uh, to the beginning of this this current impasse. Fed table will now compile the results of the vote. Yes, four hundred seventy four, cent soixante quatorze. Nays contre, one hundred forty eight, cent quarante huit. I declare the motion as amended carried. So you can see there in the upper corner that the vote came out one seventy four to one forty eight, which means one hundred seventy four parliamentarians who represent Canadians wanted these documents released to the RCMP. Now, at that point, the Liberal government has no choice. If they want to pretend to be law and order, if they want to pretend that they're protecting Canadians, they have to abide by the rules of the House because the House are the ultimate lawmakers in this country. I know that many will say, no, 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 it's the judges. That's actually... Though judges do have the right to sort of set precedent because the new things come before them and they make decisions on the fly they don't write legislation and this is legislation this is a motion in the house saying give us those papers because we're doing an investigation about fraud and embezzlement at the highest levels of the canadian government which of course is why the liberal party has seemed so keen to stop it from from happening now we come through the whole off break the whole break and andrew Shear put forward a motion telling how the liberal government didn't surrender those documents I mean, the justice minister went so far as to say that we have 15,000 documents we're not going to give you at all in any way, shape, or form. I mean, that's how well they respect the uh, democracy. The will of the people, 174 versus 148, decided that they wanted this to happen and they wanted it to happen in this manner. After that, there's nothing that the Liberal Party has the right to stand on, no matter how much they try. But they are trying, nonetheless. They uh, just last week went on CBC, or just a couple of days ago, they went on C CBC and they were talking about how They've surrendered all of these documents, and I'll let you hear how the CBC anchor pushed back on that, which is a surprise to me, of course. Well, look, as I mentioned today, the government has complied uh, with the House uh, requirement to submit documents. We've provided uh, almost 29,000 pages worth of documents to the House of Commons. Uh, we've just done so in a way that respects the rights of Canadians, that respects police independence, and respects the separation of powers. Day one, but now all of those documents are in. Um, they're just in a way. They're just in in a way that respects Canadians. They're in, but they're also redacted, right, Minister? I know the clerk of the committee that's handling all this has written to the government departments to say what's been submitted is not what MPs asked for. There are a number of blacked out sections. They are not getting the full document portfolio that they asked for. You know. And so, as a government, we said we will respond and comply with the order so long as it respects the rights of Canadians, and that is exactly what we have done. There's of course nothing close to what they have done. As they voted against the emotion in the first place, they decided that they would be petty. They decided that they would be childish. That they decided they would be petulant. They wouldn't in fact succumb to the will of the people. They decided that they would tell the will of the people. They would decide what the people are going to do because they will just abuse their position. Now they want it, she wants to use words like precedent and she wants to use all these fancy words. Now, the precedent has always got to be set. 
So there's always got to be a first, and this seems like a great example of liberal corruption that has to finally be dragged out into the light of day so that we can sanitize not only that, but all of the liberal corruption from from Jody Wilson Rainbow right forward. I mean, it's too many times. However, the Liberal Party doesn't want to respect the position of the House, right? Their Liberal Party wants to has decided that they're going to do it in a way that they approve of, right? Not in the way that the motion says, not in the will of the people. They're going to decide how they comply. But if by not fully fulfilling it to the letter, you're not complying it at all, right? There's no middle ground in there. There's no halfway. We don't. That's not how that works. This isn't a compromise. The, the will of the people was to surrender those documents unredacted. And what happens to them after that is not your problem. It's not your concern. It's the will of the people. And the will of the people are looking after that, not you, Ms. Gould, MP Gould. You're not the arbiter. You're not the final pur- uh, purveyor. You don't decide in any way, shape, or form. Now, I know that that's hard for you to wrap your mind around, that you're not in control, that you're not in charge. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're not. And for all the times I've heard the Liberal Party stand up and say, oh, look, we're in charge. The people elected us. Well, the people have chosen that they want to see those documents. The people want to see them drawn out into the light of day. The people want them surrendered to the RCMP so that they can find all of the crimes and all of the fraud and all of the embezzlement that that transpired. And if they bring that before a judge and that fails, that's not your problem. If they bring that before a judge and people go to prison, that is also not your problem. You have nothing to do but provide the documents. And after that, that's it. You're out of the picture. I know that's hard for you, but that's the reality of it. And if you can't handle that, I suggest you take that up with your therapist. Now, the CBC anchor, I don't know where he came from, has decided to push back, has decided to call it out. And I I feel like, you know, that it's about time that the press in this country decided that they are, you know, only going to survive at the will of the people, not at the will of the government that people are not going to watch their commercials, that people are not going to buy their misinformation if they want to play partisan politics, if they want to put a bias or a slant on everything that they do. I mean, we can take a look at how the CBC is collapsing in real time. We can see it happening in the United States with MSNBC and CNN. And I don't think that Ms. Gould was prepared for it. The look on her face says that she was a little bit surprised by it. But you could also move on too, couldn't you, Minister? I mean, you have the power to shut this down this afternoon. You could just produce the documents they've been asking for for weeks and all this would go away. But you are telling me that not releasing the documents is more of a priority for you than actually acting on some of these priorities you just laid out because you could take action on these. We have released the documents. Unredacted documents. Up to 29,000 pages of documents yeah but the documents are useless if they don't have what the conservatives want so she had said that um she had tried to push all this shade onto the conservatives oh they're slowing us down we can't get our bills through government and then he said well you could get the bills through anytime you want just simply produce the documents if you're really worried about whether or not your budget's going to pass if you're really worried about some of the provisions in your false statement then get the documents released and now she's trying to say well it's not true that they're good enough, right? Well, what we've taken out is she's decided what they're going to take out that the RCMP would never need, right? So now all of a sudden she's decided that she knows better than the police. She knows better than the judges. So she, on the one hand, is trying to say to you that we want to separate these things. But then on the other hand, she's trying to tell you that she knows what they're looking for and therefore is going to deny that to them. There's a lot of inconsistency or what they would call disinformation is what's coming out of the mouth of the liberal house leader, right? It's not a flat out lie. It's a half truth, what we would call, you know, a little bit of the truth sprinkled through the rest of it, right? Oh, we've released these 29,000 documents, but you haven't released them unredacted, and therefore you're not complying with the order. You're not complying with the motion. And therefore, you wasted everybody's time by, by sending, by making them go through and redact them all over again. Because you knew the motion wasn't calling for redacted documents. You knew that the, the motion was calling for the unredacted documents, and it was for the police to decide, for the RCMP to decide what could be done about it. Not you, Ms. Gould. You're not the one in control of that. You're not the one in charge of that. Now, I know that's hard for you to wrap your mind around, but that's the reality of the world. That's the situation that you're in. Now, a representative of every party appeared on Vashi's show. They were talking about these documents, and they were also talking about the resignation of Randy uh, Boisineau. And Andrew Scheer took the time to frame the conservative position, and I think that it's well worth hearing. So let's just listen to that position right now. 
And let's listen to it not as a politician, not as a partisan. Let's listen to it as a person who's just trying to get to the bottom. Let's look at it as a person who's looking whether or not there was a crime. Then what are you afraid of? Oh, it's, it's very simple. The House of Commons passed a lawful order to, for the government to hand over documents to the RCMP. The, the power for the government to do that is to act on behalf of the taxpayer, the people who pay the money that was abused. And let's remember that for a second, if you'll allow me to just frame this. This was a $400 million scandal, a billion dollar slush fund was set up. Liberal appointees started funneling money into their own companies. The Auditor General found $400 million misappropriated and a, over 180 conflicts of interest. So, so taxpayers money that was meant to go and fund innovation to, to help clean up Canada's environment record was going to liberal insiders funneling it into their own companies so that's the unprecedented nature that we're dealing with it's because the liberal scandals have reached new depths that Parliament finds itself in these new areas so of course which is the very definition of precedent it is when you're coming across something new something that wasn't covered and then decisions were made and now we are setting the precedent and I get that Karina Gould can't handle that like I get that her mind she should be the queen of the country. She should be the empress and she should just decide whatever it is we're going to do. She should be the almighty powerful dictator and she's just going to tell Canadians what's going to happen and she's going to tell Canadians that her, their money is gone forever and none of her friends are going to give them back a single penny and none of her friends are going to pay for that. However, Canada, I personally think that that's not the position we should be taking. I believe that we should be looking for all of the corruption. I believe that the scandals and the corruption and the theft and the outright embezzlement of of our dollars, of our hard-earned money, needs to be brought to light so that these liberal government players, or whether they be the insiders, or whether they be the ministers themselves, can go to prison for it. I want them. I don't want to hear about how they're going to just pay a fine or something. I think that the the crimes themselves merit going to prison. Then, if you were working in a, uh, I don't know, a bank and you did the exact same thing, they would want you to go to prison. If you were working in a grocery store and you took all of this paper and you put it in other people's bank accounts, they would call that embezzlement. So obviously this is what this is. And the fact that Ms. Gould can't seem to, or Ms. I don't know what it is, MP Gould can't wrap her mind around that indicates either a, a profound lack of a comprehension of the legal framework of Canada or she's hiding something. I mean, there can be nothing, there's no middle ground. Though she wasn't done, right? Now, I think that his position was very, was articulated fairly well. I didn't see anything childish in it. I didn't see anything inappropriate in it. I may be looking at it from a bias, but I, in my mind, we're trying to get to the bottom. We want answers. And you're not going to get the answers by giving the Liberal Party the right to hide behind themselves like they've done 10, 15 times now. However, when Ms. MP Gould was asked about it, she didn't frame it in any other way except for partisanship. That is not something that they should be doing. And conservative members of parliament would rather play these petty games. So you really will hold out. You will not relent on this. You at home are thinking they haven't done much of anything for six weeks and the government is letting this go on. I mean, is this what's going to play it over the next several weeks into Christmas? You are not budging. It's up to the conservatives to fold. Is that what you're saying? In one breath, she'll tell you that she's not backing down, but she expects the conservatives to back down. And then she calls them not backing down as petty. So what is that tone deaf or I don't know what they call that psychologically when you yourself are, are a guilty of the crime that you're accusing the other person of doing, but I can see it for what it is. I can see that on the one hand, she expects to be treated in a certain way. She expects a respect. She expects to do, have something done for her that she will not do for others. Of course, in many ways, we're probably lucky that the Liberal government is not getting away with all of their hardline, uh, far-left stuff going on. We're probably, uh, in a way, the Conservatives are probably doing Canadians a favour. I hope they keep it right through to the session closes for the whole winter, because then, once we come back in January, Jagmeet's going to have a completely different position, because he'll know that even if they call an election on day one, he won't. his pension will kick in before the election comes, before the polling starts. I find that Miss Gould is exhibiting strong disinformation traits. I think that when we were listening to the ethics committee, we, we can see how the experts said that most of the misinformation and disinformation being put into the Canadian culture is coming out of the government. We have a great example of that right here. I believe that the documents being released is important. 
I believe that not only should those documents be released, so should the 11 names. I'm tired of the liberal government being the most corrupt government in the Western countries, probably more corrupt than some of the non-Western countries. It's embarrassing to think that we elected this country, elected this person. It's frustrating to think that Jagmeet Singh is sitting there counting his, his minutes while he waits for his big giant paycheck to kick in. It's embarrassing. All right, I want to thank you for listening. I'm going to wrap here. I'll talk to you next time.